Okay, so I at hello. This is again Alan the Forex Algo Trader, and today I'm just going to show you how to create a, another indicator that is typically what can I call it? Let us just call it a moving average envelopes indicator that just like will depict what what you can see over here. That will just like show you draw the lines for you on the chart, and then maybe maybe have the price range it is just like a simple a simple indicator that can just show you the the envelopes deviation just like basically using the moving average and then at the end we will have uh, it will be just like showing the the prices on the right hand side over here like the moving average prices like for example you can see the moving average for this one maybe let me open the data window for you to see the um, for that moving average moving average for this bar is a 67300 so instead of just like having to take your casa it will just like a be shown on the data window as well as on the chart the indicator will just like uh, update those uh, data on itself so exit that is what you are going going to create at this particular instance and we just like use the same uh, the the most basic moving average uh, indicator so yeah and then again you can see it is a uh, responsive to the chart if i were to scale this down and then we wait for another tick this uh, this data over here that is shown will just like uh, uh, be adaptive will adapt to the current chart skill in that uh, case so it comes in very handy at some point so yeah you can see whenever we have a tick or a, an on calculate function or a, basically any kind of price movement then we will resize the moving average uh, our channel so we just do, did dig deep into this indicators creation so this is just another series another episode of the series that you are doing in the part of indicator so let us th let us then get started i do hope this lesson will be super quick yeah because it is you know easy <laughs> so first of all just open the meta editor and you can easily do this by clicking on the little ide icon over here or as well pressing f4 on your keyboard then the meta editor is open for you just go to let me just expand this one and then maybe i we can or i can go to indicators uh the way we do have our algo trading indicators then you can see we already have some few not so many indicators though but just an addition to, to the indicators that you already have so over here just providing our indicator file name so we can maybe call it a custom moving average uh, envelopes indicator something like that then click on next next and then finally finish that is now after providing in your uh, file name i'll expand this one so it is visible on the chart and then we can begin our uh, indicator creation so first of all let me just arrange this code formatting like uh, that so first of all basically the what we just like typically do need over here is a is a is what now I just went back so that you can see what we do really need we do need this data over here you can see we just expand this you can see we do have uh, the this moving average is the basic moving average that you can see over here it is just like uh, added to the chart that is provided by a uh, meta quotes language five so it's not too important to us but maybe i can maybe go ahead and delete it but let me just leave it alone and then let me expand this one as well for visibility purposes then our indicator now starts from here you can see we do have sma this indicator is again moving average so i just like chose to use the simple moving average to do the calculation but in your case you can choose whichever that you deem fit then over here we do have the upper upper channel 
which is now blue in color we do have the middle channel we do have the lower channel the middle channel is the basic moving average in that case if i were to shift this one by maybe typically one it will just fit perfectly with our moving average over there so yeah <laughs> i just like i uh, wanted it to be there so you can see so so that you do have some differences on whatever thing that uh, we create at the end then we can maybe have a look at uh, maybe this uh, indicator our custom indicator that you are going to create you can see the upper upper sma is a uh, blue in color we do have the middle sma which is black in color then the lowest the lower sma or a band or a channel in this case it is red in color then you can as well change the the wind and the style as a you deem fit at the end so basically that is all that we are going to create so over here what can you see now how, how, how many indicators do we plot to the chart we do plot the upper channel the middle channel and then the lower channel so we need to uh, plot three uh, things to our chart three channels to our chart then we do have this indicator that is uh, shown over here so again just like maybe need uh, data for this calculation so we'll need uh, three indicator buffers and then three indicator plots to the channel just as uh, we usually do so over here you can just come and say we need uh, we need a uh, For this property over here that you can see indicator chart window, that means the indicator will be plotted to the main chart window. Else, if you want to create it to a different window, you can maybe use uh, indicator indicator different is it different or a um, indicator. You try to find it maybe over here indicator separate window that is the wording indicator uh -huh. it is not coming maybe i need to come over here and say indicator separate it is not <laughs> showing i think we need the hashtag property but what i want to mean is this this indicator separate window it is just like be shown on a different uh, separate window in that uh, case so now we can have uh, our properties hashtag property then we need the indicator buffers let, let me just start with the buffers buffers we have said we need three buffers then again uh, property indicator plots pp indicator plots we have said we will need three indicator plots in that uh, case so if i compare these on now we don't have any significant data so we can now maybe go ahead and say uh, uh -huh. can maybe go ahead and say we need to get let's say i think that is everything L let me just get the the, the plot det <laughs> details say plot one details in that uh, instance then over here we use again hashtag uh, property then indicator let's say type 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 then you need to concatenate these with type then the number in that case so type one for plot one type two for plot two type three for plot three on once and on forth like that then indicator ty type then we want to draw uh, not arrow not bars not candles 
not color histogram not color bars not color not anything else not zigzag we just want to draw a line as easy as that very simple then another hashtag uh, property because it is you know want to draw a line so we use the moving average so we use the draw line property that is all then indicator uh, maybe we need the color for the plot one details in that case for the for our first one so for the upper one let's say we want it to be color blue in that case then hashtag property uh, uh, maybe we can have indicator 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 label so now for the indicator label one of course over there we can then maybe go ahead and say uh, we want to show upper um, maybe upper modified uh, simple moving average because that is what you want to to typically show so typically this is a uh, what will be uh, shown in the data window the the label that is what will be shown on the is a type over there on the data window then that is not there for the property number the best thing maybe is uh, to work slowly so what i will do is uh, i want to open another chart so that we can add the indicator to it so let's say open the navigator control plus n for navigator then let me, let me access the indicators over here so we have created custom ma envelopes indicator then add it to the chart so for now you can see there is no just <laughs> lines and lines because we haven't done any calculation up to this particular point so now mm, let us go back over here and uh, define maybe the plot 2 and plot 3 details simultaneously of course so we can maybe have what what maybe can we have can maybe have a uh -huh. maybe maybe I think the best thing let me let me add this onto a separate window so you can see so you can see now it is added to another uh, different window but we'll just like take it back after some time so over here you can see we don't have the we do have the new indicator window and we don't have any any kind of name can we be calm now and say um, on the own initialization section we do have the buffers mapping over there no problem with that we'll just come to that after some time and uh, typically the best thing let us just complete this details over here and just copy sometimes my copy and paste stuff doesn't really work perfectly but no problem just work with it uh, that way so we do have plot one details there let us have plot two details so over here uh, type is a uh, two of course again uh, color is two label is two but now we need to change over here for type two we don't need to change anything for however for the color we want the color to be this is not the middle one so we want it to be black and then for the plot three details we have uh, three 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 like that however for here for plot two this is not the upper but the 
middle one then let's say red for the foremost for the lower one so lower like uh, that so now we compile this one and everything is a uh, out fine so if we now come to the indicator buffers mapping over here we need to set the indicator buffers so that on the data window like if i were to go back like on the indicator window this is buffer number zero buffer number one buffer number two for the upper middle and lower uh, indicator data respectively so we can have can we be come over here and set uh, these uh, buffers using the set index buffer then function the mql5 built-in function so buffer number zero for the upper one so now we can we need to to have some kind of dynamic storage arrays over here where we store our indicator data respectively so we can have maybe we can have a double upper we have these as cups upper sma then again double middle SMA where we store typically our data that we get from the indicator end all that you are going to define after some point after some time so then again we have the lower SMA in that uh, instance so now our our array over here needs to be called by reference that is why we do have the end sign over here it is a double array with these uh, square brackets though so that is why we did go ahead and define it over there so now our buffer number is uh, typically like that then our we need to provide in our, our upper sma we need to provide in the calculations either the calculations the color index or the data in this case so in this case we just want the data to be filled into the into our arrays in that case so if i compare this one and set the other uh, buffers so buffer zero buffer one then buffer two that case this is a middle and this is a lower sma in something like that so now if uh, we come over here we need to get rid of something i think of a chart that we are not using let me typically say this so that uh, everything fits onto the chart like that so now you can see we do have upper mode sma but now it is too many because we do have this sma that is uh, over there so let's go to indicators list there delete everything So that now maybe we can add it again to to the chart that uh, case so we can stick custom me envelopes indicator this is not our file name maybe we can change this after some time later but over here you can see we do have upper mode sma middle mode sma and lower mode sma with the buffer zero one and two respectively that case which is now fit to zero 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 and some calculations over there so now yeah, at least we can say we are uh, making some some uh, progress so now you can see this custom ma envelopes indicator is the file name of our exact this uh, this uh, indicator so maybe we want to change it to some other name to another different custom name so we can have something like this We can set it using a indicator set string then providing the 
short name for the indicator that was set the indicator short name so maybe for the short name you can have a custom name let's say string short name is equals to let's say we want to call it uh, sma simple moving average then let's say we want to provide in uh, a period in this uh, case so a period may be over there then at the end maybe provide in just closure brackets that case so we just need like 12 positive signs over there because we want to concatenate it with something else so maybe we can have a period of maybe 14 like that so compile this one okay maybe you want to have a period of 14 and then this your short name is what to just come and call in over there like that so if i compile this one now and go back over here you can see you do have a sma 14 which is not the the indicator name we can just like have any other indicator name we can just like have a custom name however for us we want to use a moving average so we can maybe come uh, on the global scope and define the short name for the indicator Let us have the period as uh, 14. So integer MA period is equals to, to 14. You can just like have another period that uh, um, you can maybe be using in this uh, case. The period is typically is uh, literally the number of bars that is required for moving average calculation. I do hope that uh, you understand the moving average uh, criterion and all that kind of stuff. So the period, so we can have the moving average period over there. You can then see you do have a warning, implicit conversion from integer to string. So now for this one, we can use the integer to string concatenation function then providing our integer over there so now it will just like work by, uh, automatically so if you change the moving average period over here to let's say to let's say uh, maybe 18 if you compile this one this will now be taken out automatically and mapped out into that uh, figure over there so Again, this could be an input. So, yeah, just like kind of works uh, statically. Statically or uh, dynamically, dynamically. Yeah, something that, you know, of course, will change and work out automatically. So now, we can then maybe proceed and uh, maybe, maybe what can we do now? Maybe since we have set this, uh, we have set the short name for the moving, uh, for the, uh, for our indicator over there, then maybe we can maybe change these uh, data window labels over here respectively. So in case I were to go to uh, indicator list, custom indicator, then check on its uh, properties, then you can have the colors. Of course, the colors have, are already mapped over there. We don't have any levels. And uh, yeah, typically you do have the colors and then the labels over here in that uh, case. So now for we can maybe change this uh, upper modification that is, uh, I mean, the labels that are shown on the indicator window over there. So to change that, we can just go back and we can have uh, something like plot set. is it set or index okay it is index set then you want to set a string as well then plot number let's say zero and for our case in this instance then plot label of course then then providing the 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 string name or whichever that you can provide so over here let's say we want to provide let's say um, upper 
up uh, upper indicator something like that so if i compile this or now you should see some difference on the indicator window so we have changed the plot over here to upper and yeah that is all then the rest remain to take the default properties so if i go to indicator list and um, over here then go to properties you can see we also changed the 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 label over here to upper so in that case yeah then the same case can now be done to the other indicators so maybe over here who don't want to have the upper let's say let us add the short name to it as well so we can say um a short name then concatenate with this with the upper something like that upper upper buffer or uh, whichever whichever the buffer number so if i come now you can see sma14 which is not the indicator short name then upper then yeah you can maybe have by signal or whichever upper upper channel upper image channel or whichever custom name that you want to have so now using the same criterion can now um, do the same to the other zero one and two respectively then this is not the upper but let's say middle and then lower as well so compile this one then if i to go back now everything is updated so now i think most of the thing is now updated up to this point so you can see that uh, then again for for the digits over here, you can see we do have a typically of one two three four five six digits and i mean this thing is filling itself up to too many too many digits as you can see it is filling itself to too many digits so maybe you want to lower the to be precise and lower the digits to some number of uh, values so you can do this one by using the indicator set integer function the digits and then over here the providing the value so maybe you want to have just typically four four digits so if i compare this one let me just have not four but uh, let me say two for it to make some significant difference so if i come over here you can see we do have the zeros is no point zero zero then you can change this one to maybe maybe even 10 but 10 is too much let's compile this one then come over here again you can see it is it should be 10 and think if you count the number of zeros on this indicator window they should be 10 so yeah so now typically the the most direct way is uh, let's say you want to set it to the number of the current uh, digits for for the for the particular commodity or whichever that you have on the chart that you will be trading on the chart so now we can you know typically let's say if you know from here you can maybe say plus one to add an extra digit so now in my case it is a five then five plus one will be six uh, something like like that so just set it according to your preference then what else can we maybe maybe set maybe maybe we can set um, since we are using a moving average you can maybe set uh, the the point where we just like start to draw the moving average so you can say plot index uh, set integer then plot index let's say zero then we can have like uh, draw not draw but i think it is plot draw 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 begin in that case then we can then let's say since the moving average mm -hmm, let me say i want to open i want to open uh, this board so that i can make something clear once and for all so for a moving average let's say the number of bars Uh, 
how many am I have I drawn already? Let's say we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say even the seventh, maybe typically. the up to let's say seven bars so for the moving average calculation to be uh, done for these bars let's say we want to do calculation for moving average of this particular bar over here that means you'll take we will need the these six uh, old bars so that the data can be considered on the seventh bar so we will need at least six bars so for us now to you know to you know uh, let's say our period is a is a seven. We will need at least seven bars on the chart. That is what I wanna I wanna mean. So if we typically have uh, this this number of bars, let's say one, uh, two, and uh, three, that is not enough for us to do the the moving average calculation. You see, the moving average is just the average of yeah the prices. Let's say the closing prices was here one two three so just like take the the close prices of let's say all the seven bars and they divided it by the number of bars in that case then providing the 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 moving average over there so we'll need at least the the number of the period of bars that we define for the moving average calculation so for us not to plot we do not want to plot the moving average not unless we have the number of bars that is uh, required so we need at least uh, sma not sma but uh, this uh, moving average period then plus one where is now the num the the bar that will be used to ensure that uh, where the plotting of the indicator will uh, typically start in that uh, case so this this uh, may plus uh, one just like uh, shows that uh, just typically shows that uh, just ensures that uh, <laughs> how do i explain this i think i have already explained this just we want that uh, only after enough data is uh, available to compute the valid SMA values in this case just that is when we plot the indicator so this typically prevents incomplete calculations and surely we do have uh, accurate representations of the moving average on the chart just like uh, that one so in in our case over here we just typically ensure that uh, we have at least 14 uh, bars are needed for our moving average calculation in that uh, case so for the draw begin for the first index that is to be plotted the, then the same second and third zero one and two will just like inherit the same bus so typically just make sure you need at least 14 bars for the for successful and correct data calculation and the representation on the indicator onto the chart now so right now we cannot see anything because we haven't done any kind of uh, calculations but everything will pay out after some time and then we now maybe we can set the shift of our indicator respectively so we can set the shift plot by using plot uh, index set integer for zero then plot I think it is this one I see over here. Then plot shift, plot shift then providing the shift integer like uh, can be typically 0, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, so in my case, I just like choose to have one and that is all. So compile this one. And then the same case uh, applies to, to the others. So we can have 0, 1, and uh, to over yeah typically this plot shift is what we did see me do over here if i were to go ahead and insert a moving average typically any kind of uh, moving average let's say whichever then our shift over here is now zero that means it will be mapped to the uh, current data as uh, you can see over here if i change this uh, shift to let's say uh, one we will move the data ahead one bar ahead of where the moving average should be so now you can see we move it at least one bar end 
So if I were to have uh, 10 bars, for example, a shift of 10 bars, you'll move it ahead by 10 bars. So let me scale this one down. Move it to maybe there so that uh, you can see respectively what I mean. So if I take my cursor and check the number of uh, barrages from there up to here, it should be 10 bars. Yeah, you can see it is perfectly uh, 10 bars in between over there. That is not the shift that you are talking about. If I were to go ahead and have, uh, let's say, negative 10, it will be moved 10 bars uh, uh, back from the data. So let's say I take my cursor from there up to here. You can see it is again uh, 10 bars from where we start plotting our, our value. So that is what it be just like typically means over there. So now let me default this one to zero. Like that, so it is mapped the, the default way. So that is typically what that will do in that case. And then over here, let me just go ahead and gain and set uh, Plot index set uh, double to for for me to set the these lines over here yeah, to to empty. As you can see, if I move over around, they are just like zero 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 zeros. But I don't want that. I want it to be z empty, not unless I have some form of data. So again, for index zero, plot empty uh, value. For this value, let me just have zero point uh, zero like that. So the same case happens to the other zero zero one two. So now if I compare these one, this should not be uh, empty, not unless we have some form of data. I don't know where the calculations are coming from. Now we did uh, set this value over here to. <laughs> to blue red i think i can also say green or black yeah so now i think we have done everything that uh, we need up to this point so what we need to do now is uh, maybe typically go or come over here and uh, continue our computations respectively let me take a few of our time to reach this data the way I usually like it. So yeah, I think that is now everything that uh, we need. So now maybe we can um, come maybe typically over here and uh, create an indicator buffer for where we want to set uh, everything. So can have integer and all since we want to use the moving average we can have and all ma in my case let me just have a simple moving average like that one is equals to invalid mm, and all so invalid and all is typically negative one meaning we don't have any kind of uh, and all in that case and since i want to use sma let me have also over here uh, sma period so if i compare this one I expect some uh, errors so sma 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 or whichever maybe us could be an exponential uh, whatever so let me compare this one now for the moving average on the on initialization section over here we can set in our our indicator stuff we can maybe create the indicator and all using uh, and all uh, sma in this uh, case is equals to ima index z moving average then providing the symbol name symbol providing um, the period for the, for the current period on the chart providing the moving average period so sma period that you do have shift is zero yeah, we want a simple moving average price 
price close and that is all however let us check if we are able to add or uh, validate the indicator this is a case so if since the moving average indicator is now our sole indicator that determines our current indicator so let me check let us check if we do have it correctly on the chart if this is equal to invalid and all which is not typically negative one then you can just like a return initialization field typically because there is no any sense of just like proceeding else let us also uh, inform of the error over here and say unable to create the indicator let's say the the sma when i come to typing i'm almost poor but don't mind so yeah something like that or just informing of the error else if we do not return over here it means that we did calculate the moving average uh, correctly so just like uh, proceed uh, to the own calculate function over here so now typically this is now our our art of our indicator that you are going to create so first of all we have the number of bars on the chart we need to make sure that as i already did uh, illustrate over here we cannot continue the calculations not unless we have the correct uh, bars on the chart in my case in in our case the we have a period of uh, 14 so without uh, 14 bars over here we cannot continue the indicator calculation we'll have to wait until we have at least the number of uh, bars else we don't have the moving average so that is the first thing that to do but yeah some restriction of course so we can have something like if a uh, rates total this rates total now is the number of bars that is uh, on the chart currently that has been calculated uh, to be to be that has been predetermined to be on the chart so if this is less than the period of bus in our case now let's say we do have three bars if that three bars is less than the our period that we have defined let's say 14 bars then we cannot do the calculation just like typically uh, uh, return zero in that uh, case we cannot uh, continue in that uh, instance let us also um, in the form of the error we can say we do have less a number of we do have we do not have typically enough data for moving average calculation yeah so something like that then another thing that uh, we want to make sure is uh, we can again maybe make sure that uh, that uh, let me have it over here maybe if if uh, bars that have been calculated for the moving average and all in our case uh, and all sma is less than the number of uh, total bars on the chart we also do not continue we just like typically go ahead and return zero so what this means is that uh, is that uh, we need to calculate the number of bars on or for the moving average and all that we have added so that we can have all the the data so and then store the data for the number of bars so what this means is that uh, remember we did create a, an handle remember we have let's say one two three four five six seven or maybe eight typically then we do have a let's say a moving average that is a moving like that yeah something like that we need 
how many bars do we have over here? I think I counted eight uh, uh, bars. Then we need uh, this moving average that is now formally virtually over there to be filled with the with the calculations for the old moving average just to be considered to be considered. So if the number of bars calculated in this case is let's say calculations were done up to this point. The calculations are done up to this point. How many? One, two, three, four. The fourth, uh, fourth bar. It then means we are missing these other indicators data. We are missing these other cadres data. So then we cannot like typically proceed. We don't have the whole, the full moving average that uh, we do typically want. So now, yeah, something like that. So we need to have the full data for the calculation. Over here, if you just like over over the word press F1 on your keyboard and then the MQL5 is documented for you, you can see you do return the number of parts of calculated data for the specified indicator. Yeah, in that uh, case. So this means that uh, if if let's say we do have 10 bars on the chart and then 5 bars only are calculated, 10 bars then five bars are only calculated, then we don't have the full moving average. So we can maybe full moving average data, data then maybe we can say uh, not, we don't have enough data, not enough data calculated. For the SMA indicator, then we are reverting now in most of the cases we will not like encounter these instances but it is better for you to have the logic over there already for security reasons you know yeah so now maybe we can again continue and then say i think all the security calculations have not been considered then over here we can then say that uh, if if uh, if this is the first call if it is the first call then our previously calculated uh, bus is equals to to zero in that uh, instance then we can maybe print over here this is the first call of the indicator do let's say initial computation or computations maybe to make some uh, deeper sense in that uh, case so if this is the first call of the indicator then you compare these on then over here we should see something do initial computations okay not over there but uh, over here you can see with this the first call of the indicator then do initial computations we are required to do some initial uh, calculations over there so now so whenever whenever we call the indicator the moving average is not yet calculated so for us not to calculate the moving averages we need to consider all the available bars up to all, all the total total bars in that case so now we can have uh, we typically need to do uh, computation so that on the next call we calculate all the previously calculated bars uh, i mean all the bars on the chart whenever we initialize the indicator to the chart and then afterwards we can then have something like uh, update the the recent bar only on each and every uh, new bar generation that case instead of having to overload all the all the all the calculations all the bars on each and every tick so can we be go back over here yeah, so the first thing that uh, we want to do is a uh, we want to fill the indicator buffers with empty uh, values in this case meaning we are getting ready to do a uh, calculation so we can do this one by using array 
uh, fill function that I case then for the upper SMA fill it with a uh, zero so providing the offset zero in my case then providing the count the count is for all the total bars on the chart then the void value just like have uh, zero fill it with zero so the same case now applies to uh, the other so upper fill also the middle middle one then the lower sma as well like that so this will typically fill all the data arrays that you do have over here for the sma for this sma remember this is a, this is a dynamic array it is just like empty so now if we initialize it over here we will have uh, this data initialized to typically uh, zero, 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 zero. Remember our uh, rates. Our total rates, our uh, rates total is equals to 80 bars that we do have. Yeah, so for all the 80 bars, uh, for the upper, upper of all the 80 bars will be zero for the middle one will be zero and for the lower one will also be uh, zero in that case so we're just like preparing yeah filling out the the arrays to zero initializing everything preparing for data filament and uh, storage and uh, sorting and uh, all that kind of stuff so now we need to get the data we need to copy the data after we fill it to zero we need to now fill this uh, upper SMS data with the zero. So to do this one, we use the copy buffer, buffer function and a MQL5 built in function so that we can get the indicator from the handle, then fill it to our indicator arrays. So handle SMA, then buffer number is a, let's say zero which is now typically the default one for the moving average starting position is zero we want to copy the all of the data then the count over here is a rich total simply because we don't have any 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 prior data we want to count the our rich total is eight bars so we want to count the data for all the eight bars within this uh, span on the chart uh, window or the available data or a bus that uh, is then can have a SMA um, our our target array where we want to store our data so where we want to store our data we can have a double SMA uh, data again an array then this needs to be passed by reference that is why we do have the end sign over here then this is not the target array for where we store our data so now over here we can uh provide in our sma data over there and that is now complete however for security reasons let us check that we are able to copy the data and then our copy uh, buffer function over here is a void function not void but uh, integer it is an integer integer function you can see it is an integer over there so it being an integer we return the total let's have a look at the return value so returns the copied data count or negative one in case of an error so our what you want to count over here is an You want to check that if 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 uh, if uh, the copy buffer function over here is uh, let's say less than the requested data. Typically, rates total. In that uh, case, then we do not have enough data. We can uh, go ahead and uh, return zero. So. We return prematurely in that case then you can inform of the error and say not enough for calculations 
in that uh, case so reverting now so it means that uh, we need to copy the exact data we, we make sure that we copy the exact uh, requested data over here the requested data count the requested uh, data count over here so if we need 10 bars if our risk total is 10 bars we need total a total of 10 bars so if we do get nine bars then it means we do not have enough data in that uh, case so we revert so over here now I can maybe print this data for you on the um, the window over here and say reprint then print sma data like that and you should be able to see wow this data is too much <laughs> i bet you don't want to see it but uh, yeah it is too much as you can see the first values over here do not have any significant data but you can see we are able to get all of the data too much data for the previous indicator window so with all this data we want to uh, do mathematical computations and uh, yeah don't think we can see the the first data I don't think we can see the first data over here so uh, these bars are too many so sorting the data and trying to figure out where one candlestick bar is it's a uh, to a kike but you can see now we are able to to store the data in that uh, case dating back to very very far away so over here now we can do some mathematical computations and say um, I think with the data we can can maybe typically map everything. Um, yeah, we can maybe have a for loop to loop through the bars and map everything in that case. So we can have for integer i is equals to the the starting position for this mapping. So let us define some logic over here of the starting so wh where do we start we start let me have an integer start is equals to our start now needs to be uh, sma uh, period plus one plus one since we want to start at the Let me have some bars over here again for a better explanation. Don't know how many bars are those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can count a data count of a back count of seven bars that we have currently drawn. So in this case, you know, we need to. I think I had already explained the one. We need to let's say consider this uh, bar over there. So we need a total of uh, at least one, two, three, four, five, six bars to do the calculation in that case the reason as to why then we are saying plus one is because uh, this bar over here remember we are considering the closing price the closing price for this current bar for the currently selected bar remember it's a price is still running so we don't have a closing price that we can rely on uh, currently in that uh, instance so you can see else <laughs> else you will have a, a buffering indicator that is a that typically redraws because we cannot we don't want to consider this closing price of the bar which is no no maybe typically it could be somewhere over here and uh, its price could be 67 and then on the next take its price could be let's say 70 and then on the next price or next take its price could be somewhere over here let's say uh, 57 so it is keeps on buffering keeps on yeah changing the price so we cannot rely on that but for the this previous bar if it is 77 that is the same exact because you have already uh, concluded on the bar if this is a 60 that is the exact uh, data for that closing price for that bar and it will never change in that uh, instance so if we were to go back and then um, yeah so typically that is why we do have the plus one 
over here in that uh, case so this is just like typically to ensure that uh, there is sufficient data for the calculation of the sma in that uh, case so like in our example we have uh, 14 so we need that a total of 14 then plus one bus from where now we want to map so we need a 14 data count for plus one this will give you 15 so we need a total of 15 bus that is where we start that is where we want to map our 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 value so in our case this is a 14 uh, bus that we need constant that does not change the price and then we need to map it it on the 15th bar so we need to map it on the 15th bar in that case so we need a total of 14 bars that whose data has already been computed in that case then we map it on the 15th bar i do hope that point is already at home then which now means that we can uh, continue with the data filling and all that kind of stuff so we start at the starting over there and then we then continue to um, for integer i is equals to start then whenever i is always less than a uh, rate total in that uh, case and the indicator is not stopped is stopped is not a uh, stopped in that uh, instance then our index i we increment it by by one in that uh, case so now we can have let us start the computation with the middle data over here and say middle data then for the currently selected bar let's say an uh, index of i is equals to sma uh, data that you do have for that uh, particular bar in that case so now can compile this one and then you can now see we do have the indicator being mapped onto the chart window over there then afterwards you need to maybe typically maybe typically return return the rate total this rate total so if it is a successfully calculated then we return the rate start over there so yeah we just like return early that is what we mean so i want to map this on to return it to this indicator so it is not separate window but the main window so chart uh, indicator chart window so that is it is now returned to the chart over there okay so now you can see the indicator on the chart window that is now however shifted by one mark expand this one for you easier visibility so now for this one indicator or well, i just did delete it again no problem i could just add it so this has a shift of one this has a, has a shift of zero so we can maybe go to can maybe shift this one to To one and you can see it is right mapped onto the indicator that you do have there is no any uh, significant effect so if i return it to zero then you can see i just have it there for you to see the the difference in that case so we have actually shifted this one by one bar so now for our indicator maybe to make these um, 
is for you indicator shift over here was a zero if i have 10 10 and a 10 then you can see it is shifted by 10 bars ahead uh, don't know if you can see this huh? but let me make it easy for you to see so you can see we have shifted it by uh, 10 bars ahead so Typically, that is what we mean. You can see it is just the same indicator, just like shift it. So now you understand what this shift means over here. And that, okay, so we want to just shift it by one bar end, and that is all. So now, if you want to change this width, I think you can change it over here and say, um, hashtag uh, property. Well, not indicator applied price, but uh, indicator wind, I think, wind uh, 2. Let's make it uh, let's make it uh, 3. Compile I think I changed the middle. We should have something like this. Okay, let me delete it. Then re add it again to the chart. So you can see now it comes with the with the three i think i mean you can change pretty much everything let's say you want even to make it super big compile this one now the problem is after compilation you need to you know pre-check it again but uh, no problem like re-add it again so delete the indicator then add it again to the chart and then you can see it just like has that uh, wind of seven so you can change like over here Wind of seven, like you can just like typically go ahead and change uh, pretty much uh, many things. However, let me just have the default one, or maybe you can have two or uh, three. It doesn't really matter. Let me just have one that I uh, guess I did oversee that for a minute, but uh, yeah, so it is the same. think I had a class and I think it is uh, all done so I'll just leave it alone don't report me <laughs> so yeah let us just go back so let me clear off this one then uh, can we be come over here yeah, and do the same for the other indicators like uh, yeah right now we are able to map everything then let me compile the uh, let me just copy not even copy there is no any sense of uh, copying this one so for the upper upper sma remember this is the middle sma or the main sma in that uh, case the major sma so now from this middle or the main sma to i upper upper index i then is equals to We do some mathematical computation let's say we want to one plus one then uh, one plus the some deviation let's say 10 14 15 these are divided by uh, 100 in that case then multiplied by multiply these on by and um, the value that you do up for the middle sma at uh, the one in that case should give us the upper 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 band and uh, yeah then for the lower one just copy these 
Now for the lower SMA, we just like need to not add but negate and that is all. So if I compare this one, we should be able to get some results in the window. We delete this one and re-add it again. So do the initial computations. I don't think we I see anything. Let me go back. For this turn, well, okay, for the turn is too big. Let me say 0 0.1, a division of 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Turn is too big. Then, okay, yeah, now we can see some uh, envelopes or deviations being drawn to the chart. And yeah, so typically we just like do some, some particular offsets in that uh, instance. So if I go, okay, the, the best thing to represent this one is uh, just go to the global scope over here and say we can have uh, double... Again, you can have this one as an uh, input, let's say 0 0.3 maybe. So now over here, instead of doing it manually, you can just like change one value and that one value changes the rest of uh, our stuff. So we can have SMA deviation, SMA deviation in that case. So if I compare this and then go back again, you can see we do have this kind of, uh, kind of uh, data over here. So typically I think that is uh, all and everything, yeah, and uh, we are now able to input the, the channels over there, the envelopes, I mean the moving average envelopes, so we do have the, like typically I think everything that, uh, you know, we do need. <laughs> So now what we then need to do is uh, maybe we can go ahead and add uh, the price for the, this price that you can see over here, the price that uh, you can see over here at the end. So that is typically an object. So we can create an object for our indicator and the, everything just like be okay. So now can come, can have a custom function outside everything and say can have what now we can maybe have a, a boolean function let's say draw right price just like we always do then use the object create function that case object create providing the chart id zero for the current chart then providing the name so can have a string over here obj name since we'll always use the name afterwards obj name then providing the the type of object that you want to draw so it is uh, obj uh, right, right, is it right price? I think arrow, 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 right price. Yeah, perfect. Then providing the uh, sub window zero for the current sub window or uh, main window chart in this uh, case. Then we need the time and the price that we need to map our stuffs. So providing date time time double price that a case so we need to provide time and the price in that a case so first of all let us check if object create function if you over the over the word impressive one on the keyboard you should 
get uh, everything so it is a boolean function in that case which returns return value is a uh, true in case of a success or otherwise it returns false in case of a failure to create the predefined uh, object so we can say if false or if not equal to true over here then uh, there is no any point of continue we just like return uh, false in that uh, case then inform of the error and say uh, we can print something to the journal and say uh, unable to create the right price arrow object in that uh, case so reverting now or just like typically going back telling the user why we just like uh, deviated from the object creation or maybe you can also return the the return the what do i call it now typically <laughs> return the error code in that case then yes just like return uh, true in that uh, instance so now that typically takes care of the error that uh, you did see over here so if I compare this one you can see we do have a warning I mean an error not even a warning that uh, we need to return a value because it is a boolean function so we need to return it the true or false so yeah that is why so that takes care of that error over there so now over here can we be guided and now update the object properties using object uh, set I set let's say integer object set integer let's say uh, zero for the chart ID bj name then obj what can we set maybe let us set the the color then color maybe for the color you can have the color over here color in that case then let us set some other um, typical integers let's say you can also maybe set the the wind so for the wind let us let's say i can have uh, integer wind is equals to one over here and then come now with my wind and set it over there then other than the wind we can maybe set the 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 style the line style so it can be a style solid and then let's say for back state do you want it to be at the back so we don't want it to be at the back always so set true then maybe maybe selected and selectable let's start with selectable force you can not select it it is not a button so selected again let us have it as false i don't think if you need some other extra information you can just like add it on a soft then over here you can have a chart redraw function so then set this on to zero compile this one then uh, we can use our function to you know typically draw h and everything that uh, we want this uh, case so can maybe come over here yeah, after we do set each and everything over here yeah, can just come and say call our function by typing it, its name providing the object name so now our object name maybe we can have a uh, you can maybe have a let us have a suffix over here so hashtag define uh, obj main prefix prefix indicator and um, we can now use our 
obj prefix and I concatenate this one with another name let's say for the let us start with the middle one middle one then say and provide in the time so let's say our current time take the time of the of the current bar current bar with a shift of a zero in that uh, case so time current time then providing the price the price is now uh, for the middle one is a uh, let's say middle sma of a uh, reach total minus on the total number of bars there minus one to push it no add then this one is a uh, let's say color color black let me first of all compare this one and then now you can see we do have these uh, price where is it okay the price over here you can see let, let me make this stuff adjustable first of all <laughs> it is too small for you to see let, let me just like make it adaptable first of all before we continue with the allegations over there so we can make this on by usually getting the 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 chart scale can say if if uh, we just get the scale initialize it initialize it to zero then chat get integer zero then chat scale then chat scale sub window zero the the long value is a uh, store this to the chat scale in that uh, case so we can have if we do not get the chat scale in this instance unable to get default scale of is considered something as typical as that is a is a considered So over here I can print the chart scale for you to see. So over here chart scale is a five because it is a fully or a, or a maximumly scaled up so five is the maximum and then zero is the minimum so if i scale it down to zero and then come over here again compile this one you can see the chart scale now will be zero so we do have zero one two three four and five so the current chart is now uh, zero that is one two three four and finally five the maximum one so we want our scale over there to be um, 
you know in accordance to uh so yeah something like that so now you can have some if statement over here and say if a scale is equals to zero our wind we want our wind also remember zero zero is equals to minimized fully and uh, five is equals to uh, maximized fully so our wind for the smallest scale we want it to be small as well so we can say our wind is equals to to one in that uh, case so else else if so we what to do over here is just like to, like uh, we overwrite our, our window over there so it just like be one else if uh, scale is equals to one then again our width we want it to be one else if our wind is two we want our i mean our scale is two we want our wind to be two if our scale is a uh, three we want our wind let's say to be two maybe as well if our scale is four we want our wind to be let's say a little bit bigger four and then if our scale is a five which is not the final one we overwrite our wind now to be uh, let's say three again so if i compile this one now you see now this is a bit bigger and if i minimize it and then we do have some form of tick we should be able to update it i think okay for their own calculation that is where it will apply but maybe for now not unless we we you know compile this one that is when we have the the smaller scale over there so what i wanted you to see now is a thing oh our battery is almost running out yeah now we are back connected to power so we want to have uh, where was the calculations now over yeah so so the mapping okay this was, was my concern let me let me compile this again so we do have a maximum or a bigger value yeah you can see that uh, this scale is mapped to this current bar over yeah but we, in our bar we did define to it to have a shift off uh, you know one now we have graduated to another bar I think the time over here yeah that is why you do have movement so let me recompile it again that okay so we do have the current values being applied so you can see we do have uh, this difference of the bar over here so we need to push it a little bit ahead because we had a shift of one so our time over here for for the bar we need to you know push it a little bit by one bar so we need to say plus one which is now you are you are shifting this case if your shift was 10 then you need to have 10 over here so one times then convert this on to the number of uh, periods that you do have on the chart so period second then yeah not a must for you to provide that i do have times times over there that will result to an error so if i compile this or not this should be mapped to the correct it is, you can see it is has been moved from to, to where it is now supposed to be to the current time and uh, yeah over there and the uh, price as well so now you can see our indicator buffers and again you can maybe confirm this uh, scale where maybe having the shift over here to one and comparing our moving average data with this ma data with the this middle data over there they should uh, be the same at least so we do have a middle 
we do have 74 and the other one is 78 but remember this one is moving in that uh, case so the current one is moving so for this one you can see i'm comparing this ma14 the original one and our middle name or our middle M ma for, like, for example we do have 0 0.672959 and that is exactly applied to the other so which means that our indicator is fine so let me shift this one now back to zero so that you can see some differences so we do the same for the others and the game is over so copy this one paste it a few more times too then let us do this one for the upper the upper is color blue and then the lower lower is color uh, red in that case and then everything now should be complete I think we do have a problem. I think we do have a problem. <laughs> that is not correct. So what did we oversee? We did oversee over here. Okay, the things over here is the upper MA and then the not the middle but the lower MA. We did forget that logic so now it is applied correctly so now for the moving average is uh, applied correctly as uh, you can see with the that shift over over there so yeah everything now is uh, typically working out as fine so what you can now do is maybe uh, update these on each and every tick on each and every calculation not on it on it no um, the first call of the indicator is done so now we need to do the other calculations remember after everything just like return over here and this return is wrongly placed as i think so we move it back up one tab ahead shift plus tab to move it one tab backwards then from here we can now do the other the other uh, computations in that uh, case so this is just like uh, we update um, everything and the other bus so to do this one just like again use the for loop then for of course integer then i is equals to to start but now our start over here is uh, tampered with this start is only available on the on this loop on this uh, upper 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 for loop in that uh, case however for us now we just like want to go ahead and um, do our own mathematical computations and yeah so what you do we need to predefine to predefine our our starting logic over here so let me have uh, integer start is equals to the previously calculated minus one in that case so we just like um, what you want to do over here we just like update from the last calculated bar in that uh, case or the the number of uh, desired bars that uh, you wanna consider in that uh, instance so i think it is just the same for loop that you do oh yeah let me just copy this on paste it yeah so for integer i is equals to start in that case then whenever um, our i reach total i less is less than reach total and it is not equal to is a stop then we increment our logic by one then we continue to do our other calculations 
over here you know then the same thing that happened over here we just like no we do not need to you know refill the array to zero then you just like need to copy the data from the end all in that case we do have the just like get the values into the indicator buffer in in this case move sma data just as a usual we don't need to change anything then if copy buffer uh, zero then now some some things now will change over yeah buffer number will not change because that is the same uh, indicator number however for the starting position we not need to calculate uh, everything so the easier way okay you can start at a zero in this case for the current bar but uh, the easier way to do this one is to have a, a reverse index over here just like for correct uh, data mapping to the index array we can maybe have uh, integer reverse index is equals to it's total minus the previously calculated bar then plus uh, one in that uh, case we typically say plus one over here to, to just like uh, do the zero based indexing in this uh, case so like arrays start from when you refer to data arrays to typically a dynamic array or any other kind of array the 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 arrays are zero zero indexed in this case meaning that the first element is at index zero so in this case you don't want to start at index zero for the current bar which is now being formed we start from a uh, one that is so that is why we add plus one over there then we can now start use our our starting position no not zero but uh, as now the reversing index as the reverse index in this uh, case the in this uh, case our count we do not need we just want to update the the latest data in this uh, case so not all the data in this case was all the number of bars but in this case we just want to update just one bar the data for one bar in that case then to the sma data yeah so if this is less than the requested data then you can go ahead and say not enough data from make calculations and then you know return then do don't do not return zero for, yeah just like return the previously calculated bar which is now data that does not include the current bar so yeah so now from here let me compile off to this one everything is uh, out working and fine so now we can continue over here and uh, just like map the data respectively so to the middle data let me just copy this and paste it instead of having to repeat myself over again and paste it over here so to the middle sma sma data now this is now for the current bar not i uh, this uh, case and um, everything now should be super correct and uh, fine i mean Okay, we need to also update these, uh, these, what do I call it, these, indicator, don't know, handle or what, or what, but uh, this data over here is not mapped correctly, we need at least a bar or so. Let me 
me try one but i don't think one should be should work yeah i think now okay we do have an array out of range of, yeah it is working but we do have an array out of range so it shouldn't be one because we we call just one data over here so it cannot be correct that way Okay, and then another thing, if we <laughs> delete the indicator, we also want to get rid of these uh, stuff. So yeah, I have just noticed that. Let us take care of that first by having um, a deinitialization function. Since we don't want uh, the indicator to... typically have some mess on our chart so we just go to help mm. what typically over here yeah. just phone on the keyboard then go to search index then type in on d init function so i want to copy this function then paste it over here the odd initialization function Yeah, on the init function you can easily add the function header by just uh, going to control plus period or a full stop for it to be added to you correctly so we need to uh, objects uh, delete all providing the sub window zero then providing uh, we need to use the prefix so add obj prefix then sub window zero then the type of object is a obj uh, we want to delete all our arrow uh, right price objects in that case and after deletion we want to chart uh, redraw redraw the chart in that case so we can take care of of these prices as well so that uh, if we just come over here and delete then we delete the prices as well in that uh, case so now you can see we delete this or clear everything that uh, instance so now uh, i want to we said we want to update the price over here we want to update the price somewhere 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 okay for the reverse index we said we want to add uh, let me see if this does work fine now the current one is working fine but not the others i mean like we do have this kind of gap what do we have this kind of gap now we should shift it ahead by like we do to the others and that was to be enabled by saying plus one over there so now mm -hmm. okay the price is not being updated i see that i think plus one does not 
the shift, the shift, the shift. Okay, let me have a look at the shift. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, the shift is already very fine. Okay, let me just first of all do the calculation so that we can be seeing everything. So now I'll just copy this and update this first. So can we compile this? Okay, we do have a macro redefinition. Let me comment that out. The time is just like the same. And uh, okay, for the red start over here, we need to. I think we just let me have a look. Okay, yeah, exactly that is not working because we can't have it over. Yeah, I think we will have something like something that buffers. Let me try to have a look. Yeah, we will, we should have something that is buffering because of the error. That we do make over there, but let us make the changes first of all. So, over here it is a I. I and I over there as well. So, compile this one. Yeah, only this is a responsive. Just take care of this first. So we have a red price, current time, middle uh, SMA. For the upper, for this bar, there is no, no, no problem. There shouldn't be any problem, but what do we have problems with this update now? Uh huh, uh huh, I see. <laughs> for the start of here, yeah, it should be the current bar, not, okay, I get it. Not zero, that is not the problem of copy and paste. Sometimes you forget some errors and they're very foolish errors for that matter. So, over here, you can see for this bar, wow, well, now we do have an array out of range error on uh, line 150. Column 32, line 150. Over here. Yeah. For this, since we are calculating it from uh, SMA data, SMA data that is over here yeah, is uh, just as con does contain just one count, so it is just one bar. So count of I, uh, let us just have the zero one, compile. Clear. Let me get rid of this indicator and uh, re-add it again to the chart. This is the first call. 
calculations have been done and uh, now for this bar over here once we do have uh, another calculation it is a uh, shifting to uh, zero like this bar does not have any I mean our current bar does not have any value let's say plus a zero i think now it is uh, updating correctly but i think we should have plus one for us to shift the the previous calculations by uh, i think now everything is working out fine yeah we do have the shift of one bar over there i think this is the the, the final correct uh, method this case at the end of uh, everything i think this is just ignore this plus uh one that you did have over yeah just have a uh, rich total minus the previously calculated instead of having plus one for you to shift everything to the right side so just have it as let's rich total minus the previously calculated to get the difference for the one bar over there instead of having two what i mean zero bars okay so now i think i think everything is now done up to this point we have calculated our indicator actually you can just like run it on the strategy tester for you to see so we do have the the bar mapped over there yeah and everything 